Today's Hollywood Camera, the trailer and trivia show. Join us as we review coming attractions from the past and give you the inside scoop on Hollywood's golden age. We'll look back at great scenes from those classic and not-so-classic films from the 30s to the 80s. Get your popcorn out. It's time for Hollywood Camera. Today on Hollywood Camera, some really horrible horrors. See some circus freaks with a mission. We'll visit the popular horror hotel where checking out isn't easy. And then you'll experience the hunger. Hello and welcome to a very scary edition of Hollywood Camera. I'm Dan Duran. And today we're going to look into the deep, dark reaches of our movie vaults where we've gathered together the best collection of what could only be called horrible horrors. Now just listen to some of these plot lines. A cowboy who's a vampire, or how about a woman who's been dead for 300 years feeding on the blood of others? Sound horrible to you? Well, let's get to our first film. The year is 1932, the setting, the circus. Picture, if you will, the cast of a freak show. They range from creatures with no arms or legs to scaly skinned men, pinheads, dwarfs, and a bearded lady. And believe it or not, they're a close-knit family that will do anything to protect one another. Let's take a look at the freaks. This film was originally financed and produced by MGM, but they quickly disassociated themselves from it when it was attacked for being tasteless. synopsis of the plot. Cleopatra, a trapeze artist, plans to kill the head freak in order to get his fortune. So she acts like she loves him and they eventually get married, even though the, she really loves the strong man. Then, after the murder, the other freaks learn the truth. Of course, they're mighty upset and they all head off in search of Cleopatra. see those freaks ca uh, crawling and uh, sliding along the ground? Ooh. Oh, by the way, they eventually caught poor Cleopatra and turned her into a freak like them. And get this, the new addition to the sideshow is half woman, half chicken, who no doubt can do a mean number on the trapeze. And in case you couldn't tell, the cast of freaks were all real, which is partly why the film was labeled as tasteless. I think the uh, plot might have contributed to that as well. And speaking of plot, listen to the storyline of our next film. It's about an invisible invader from outer space who wreaks havoc on Earth. It's called Phantom from Space, and it was unleashed on the world in 1953. Time, 7.19. An unidentified object was picked up 200 miles southwest of Point Barrow, Alaska. Height, 75,000 feet. Estimated speed, 5,000 miles per hour. White warning. 754, first interceptor flight airborne. Point of interception, 80 miles due west of San Francisco, California. 755, unidentified object past point of interception. Red warning. This is the account of a handful of people who in the course of one desperate night 
fought off an unknown, unseen menace from another world. Doubly terrifying, because it was invisible. Is that you, Doctor? <laughs> So there you go, at this very moment, there could be an invisible invader or predator lurking about. So watch out. By the way, one reviewer called Phantom just plain dull. Now, in case you're wondering, I'll fill you in on the criteria we use to choose our horrible horrors. Firstly, and most importantly, we wanted unusual plot twists, like the freaks we watched earlier. Then we also looked for poor box office performance and generally bad acting, editing, you know, that kind of thing. And finally, since it's been a few years since these films were released, we liked uh, the ones with outstanding special effects. Well, our next film meets all the way above criteria. It's Giant from the Unknown, and it was released in 1958. I'm telling you, there's something mighty strange going on around here. First, the cattle and the horses ripped apart. An old man banks is found dead under mighty peculiar circumstances. Just ain't natural. For five centuries, it waited beneath the earth, held captive by a mountain of stone. No, you don't think he could still be alive. If he were, it could explain a lot of things that have been happening. That's impossible. He's been dead at least 500 years. So was that lizard I found. Suddenly, in a flash of fate, nature unleashed this horrendous monster. The nightmare giant who held all civilizations in a paralyzing grip of fear. Man was powerless against this creeping terror. Bullets could not stop it, and only human life could satiate its bloodlust. <laughs> Here is terror that strikes with gigantic fury. An amazing adventure into a hellish world of horror you will never forget. Beware, its cold look of death is watching you now. Okay, he's a little upset. You know, being buried for 500 years can work up a hell of an appetite. Well, I think we need a break from these horrible horrors. But before we do, here's our first trivia challenge. Take a look at this picture. What was the cause of this man's reptilian transformation? Here's a hint. It was the result of science gone bad. We'll give you the answer right after this. Coming up next on Hollywood Camera, Curse of the Undead, a horror western gone bad. For Hollywood Camera by DeBoer's Furniture. Welcome back to the horrible horror edition of Hollywood Camera. Now, before the break, we asked you the cause of this man's reptilian transformation. The answer is an atomic accident. And not only that, but he would only turn into the reptile when exposed to sunlight. Maybe that explains why he looks so pale. Amazing what radiation can do. Anyway, here's The Hideous Sun Demon, directed by its star, Robert Clark. A man who loved with fierce, demanding passion. monster who ran wild in a reign of terror that spread murder in his trail. <laughs> the 
thing that went wrong in the secret atomic laboratory afflicted him with the most hideous curse ever visited on man, forcing him to cower in the darkness like a hunted animal. For one touch of the sun's bright rays transformed him into the reptilian Jekyll and Hyde monstrosity who couldn't control his lust to kill. <laughs> A hideous movie. Well, it's time to enter the world where no neck is safe, where only a crucifix can save you. That's right. It's time to look at a vampire movie. But better than that, a really bad vampire movie. The 1959 film Curse of the Undead is a combination horror and western film. A black-clad stranger rides into town and turns out to be the fastest fang in the West. Peering out of the nightmare darkness. Evil his face, evil his deed. Who not only did the vampire have a nasty bite, but he was also packing a pearl handled gun. He was strong, impervious to most weapons, and he had hypnotic powers. And to top it all off, he's immortal. With assets like that, it wouldn't matter how fast our cowboy was on the draw. You were just lucky the other night when my man missed you. If that was me, you'd be pushing dirt. Don't reach for your gun. When did you get out of here? You call the time. Are they doomed, all who oppose him? Great. Can nothing human stop him? I hit him. I know I hit him. If I can't do it now with your consent, I'll go into Banning and get a court order. But I'm going to open those coffins. See you dead, sir. Now get out! I bet you can't guess how the vampire was killed. The town preacher put a tiny crucifix in the head of a bullet and shot him dead in a gunfight. Come to think of it, that's a fairly innovative, considering the high standards of the rest of the film. Uh, the next film is also about a person who's dependent on blood, except this time it's a witch who's been dead for 300 years. She manages to keep her body alive with the help of the guests staying in her hotel. I guess you could say she relied on the involuntary blood donor program of the Horror Hotel. This is Whitewood, Massachusetts. A young girl, a stranger, has come to Whitewood to do research. She has come she thinks to study. Leave Whitewood. Leave Whitewood tonight. I beg of you. Leave before it is too late. In spite of this warning, the girl lingers on. <laughs> years old. Human blood keeps them alive forever. Oh, no. Well, 
it's time for our next trivia challenge question. We're going to take a look at another not-so-hot vampire film right after the break. So it's fitting that our next question is about that famous bloodsucker himself, Dracula. Who played Dracula in the original film version? We'll give you the answer right after this short intermission. Coming up on Hollywood Camera, the fearless vampire killers, or pardon me, your teeth are in my neck. Camera provided by the Sheraton, home of fine catering for any occasion. Welcome back. Well, I've got the answer to our second trivia challenge question. We asked, who played Dracula in the original film version? Well, the answer is Bella Lugosi, and he played the role in both the stage and screen versions. By the way, there is more than one way to kill a vampire. Can you count the ways? We've already mentioned the crucifix. Well, there's two others. See if you can spot them in our next preview for the Fearless Vampire Killers or Dance of the Vampires. Who says vampires are no laughing matter? <laughs> they certainly are. Polanski starred in, wrote, and directed this film. And coincidentally, Polanski ended up marrying co-star Sharon Tate. And in 1974, he made another sojourn into Dracula films with the release of Blood for Dracula. Vampire killers, or, oh, pardon me, but your teeth are in my neck. Jack McGarrett. Sharon Tate. Alfie Bass. Freddie Maine. And Terry Dodds. a vampire hunt. Simple? They certainly are. A spoof that was actually a pretty good film well here's the two other ways to kill a vampire if you can drag one out in the sunlight they tend to scream and become a pile of ashes on the ground or you can just use the third which is the drive a wooden spike through the heart of the vampire method well now let's see if you can picture this a colony of ants coming upon a barrel of nuclear waste they turn into giant ants and use people as slaves Ooh, another large dose of radiation. Hmm, a telltale sign of a great flick. Genetically impossible, you ask? Well, just watch what nuclear waste can do. In this fantastic tale, Wells tells the chilling story of a colony of ants who feed on atomic waste, causing them to grow into large, voracious monsters. Kyle, let's get out of here! Come on! And these giant ants are actually able to control humans. He needs us. That's why it has to be this way. Why we must obey. At first, the people don't understand. They must be forced into submission. After their indoctrination, they realize that the ants only want us to take care of them and work for them, feed them. That's the way it should be. They are superior. <laughs> Well,
Well, we've come to the end of our salute to horrible horrors. I hope you've had a few laughs, and I'll leave you with a recent attempt to update the Dracula movie. It's called The Hunger, and it's a mix of sex, rock and roll, and, well, bad reviews. And remember, the next time you're in your local video store, check out any of today's great movies and see for yourself why they were such horrible horrors. Until next time, I'm Dan Duran, and I look forward to looking back with you again very soon. Sarah Roberts is in jeopardy. Hey, lady, how about it? Stay with her. Help her, for she has begun to feel the awful horror of the hunger. John Blaylock, the hunger has given him everlasting life. Until now, pray for him. Miriam Blaylock, she feeds one day in seven on the unsuspecting and soon she will turn into something that you will never be able to forget. No matter how hard and how long you try, fear her. What have you done to me? Forever and ever. And life signs terminate right here. beauty of Catherine Deneuve, the cruel elegance of David Bowie, the open sensuality of Susan Sarandon, combined to create a modern classic of perverse fear. Blues great B.B. King assembles an all-star lineup of music greats tonight at 8. Now, your center court for the exciting Wilson Cup final, next on Channel 11. Haunting, mysterious, sensual, strange, perverse, riveting. The hunger.